Connect Church, Pastor Derek here. What an honor to be with you today. Listen, I want to welcome all of our online viewers. I want to welcome all of you that maybe are watching on YouTube. You might be local. You might be somewhere in this country, maybe even around the world. Hey, thank you for being with us this morning. In addition, I want to give a special shout out to our physical locations, Ashland and Framing. Hey, we just opened up last week. We're open every single week going forward. I'm so excited to be together again physically in church. And very soon we're going to have a new location in the Tri-County area. Keep praying about that in Jesus' name. So listen, as we uh, go forward, a couple quick announcements. I do not want to neglect to tell you that we start small groups literally tomorrow. The men meet tomorrow. The next day the women meet. I'm actually going to be with all the guys uh, tomorrow night. I'm going to be teaching tomorrow night. So don't miss our small groups this summer. This is the best way for you to grow. You want to go from kind of big church to small church. This is how you stay healthy. This is how you uh, stay in community. And this is how you grow. You go and grow as a Christ follower. So don't miss that. Now listen, today's a special day. I don't know. You might want to look around. I want to just give a shout out to all the dads, all the fathers, all the grandfathers, all the papas and all the grandpapas. Listen, can we just give all the fathers and all the grandfathers a big shout out? Come on, everywhere, all around, give God glory for all these great men of God around you. Happy Father's Day. This is a special day. I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. I'm a proud father and a proud big poppy. I named myself a long time ago. You know, you get to name your kids when you're growing up. But when you're a grandfather, you get to name yourself, or so you think. Because they could call you whatever the heck they want. You never know what's going to happen. But anyway, I just want to give a shout out to all uh, the dads and all the uh, grandfathers out there. Listen, I'm in a series, and this is the final installment this morning. We're in part six of our Men of God series. Now, this series has been designed from the outset to now to inspire men to lead. And I hope that you've been able to uh, engage in this series from beginning to end. Today, I'm not going to come hard on the men. I'm, gonna, I'm coming for the ladies a little bit. Now, I might not get as many amens today as I usually do, because usually the ladies are the ones that are amening. But I think all the guys are going to be pretty happy with this message today. Today's message is entitled, Help Me Understand My Man. Help Me Understand My Man. Now, I'll start out with a little story. You know, you guys all know my son, Devin. Uh, he's one of our pastors here, one of our primary communicators. What's interesting is when he was a young man, uh, when he would get frustrated trying to express himself or communicate, he would have this little phrase that he would use, and it's become kind of a family joke, and it's just been passed down, and we say it at different times uh, when we're frustrated about something we're trying to express. Interesting enough, he would say different things he would say this thing, excuse me, when uh, he was trying to win an argument, but it didn't work out. Or he was trying to get something that he wanted, uh, and it didn't work out. And so whenever he get to that place, and he's totally frustrated, he would turn to me, uh, or turn to Stacy, and he'd say, Dad, Mom, you don't get it. You don't get it. And then he would just walk away. He would just walk away, and he would just go into total silence. You just don't get it. Now, again, I think there were some things he wanted he couldn't get, but I think there was something deeper there. Not only in my son, but there's something deeper there in every man. There comes this place maybe in our life, there comes this place maybe in our desire to vocalize some things, and we wonder if anybody gets us. Now, our big idea in your notes, if you're taking notes, and I encourage you to take notes because we believe note takers are, come on, write it down, come on, say it out loud, Ashland and Framingham, note takers are, that's right, history makers. Here's our big idea. We can't succeed in something that we don't understand. Now, you know this to be true, right? You know you can't succeed in business if you don't understand accounting or or finance or forecasting depending on what you're in you know you can't succeed and and get healthy if you don't and and, and if you don't understand exercise if you don't understand kind of dieting um you can't succeed and you know you can't you can't succeed in relationships if you don't understand some things about relationships and that's particularly true when it comes to male and female relationships. And I would like to say or like to submit in particular when it comes to men. Proverbs 4, Solomon says this in verse 7. He says, the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. 
Then he says, though it costs you all you have, get understanding. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, get some understanding. Get you some of that, okay? Now, so you can't succeed if you can't understand. And so the enemy, as, as a result, he's going to work really hard to try to distract you. He's going to work really hard to try to darken the truth, diminish the truth, um, you know, disguise what really is going on and get us to focus on surface things instead of the real issues that are at hand because the devil is really good at breeding confusion. The Bible calls him the author of confusion. But God is not a confusing God. God is a crystal clear God. God is a God of vision and clarity. And so in this um, world we live in today, there are, I think, there are a lot of messages about understanding women because we need help understanding women. There's no, that is no, that is totally true. There's no lie about that. And we, and there's, and there's messages and there's books and there's volumes written about understanding your wives. And the Bible encourages us to do that. But I find very few things out there on understanding how a man works, understanding men. And I think men need to be understood. In fact, it's kind of an internal combustion inside of them that I think we saw in that initial story with Devin. So today's message is, is, is really dedicated to that because when I um, look back at my history, when I look through my professional career as a pastor and a counselor and a coach and a mentor, I've had hundreds, maybe thousands of conversations with men. And the the core of those conversations is many men feel misunderstood. And they, 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 if they can articulate it, and sometimes they have a hard time expressing it because they've been so suppressed, they basically are saying, I don't feel understood. Now, this is not just in male-female relationships. This can just be in life in general for men. And a man, you might want to write this down, but a man that is misunderstood is an unheard man. And an unheard man ultimately becomes or goes silent. An unheard man is a, is a, a, a misunderstood man, excuse me, is an unheard man. An unheard man eventually goes silent. He, it can manifest in passivity. It can manifest, like we talked about a couple weeks ago, in a spiritual lameness. It can manifest in a, in a sort of resignation, a, a deaf and, and, and seemingly dumb attitude towards life. Now, this next text we're going to look at, Genesis 3, kind of describes this problem. And I'm going to paraphrase what's going on here. There's a serpent that shows up in the garden. And the Bible says he's crafty. And he's really crafty in his communication and his ability to influence and lure people to his lies. And he begins to twist the truth with uh, Eve there. And, you know, God didn't really say you couldn't have this and... And in fact, if you did take of this tree, you know, it would open your eyes. And, and, and he doesn't appeal to her on her desire to sin. He appeals to her on her desire to be like God. That manifests his craftiness. And then he says, uh, you're not going to die. And then in verse 5 of Genesis 3, which is the description of the fall of man. This is when everything went haywire. He says, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes are going to be open. You're going to be like God. See, he appeals to her desire to be like God, knowing good and evil. And so when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. And the eyes of them were both opened, and then they realized they were naked. Once they opened their eyes, shame came, all those attributes of victimization that we talked about in week chapter two. Now we know and have established at the onset of this series that Adam was ultimately held responsible for what went wrong here. Uh, God didn't come into the garden and say, hey, uh, where y'all at? Where you at, Adam and Eve? Nope. He came looking for Adam and we learned that Adam, uh, one of his primary roles and responsibilities was to be responsible. And so um, we also know that what happened here eventually has decimated destinies for generations after that. So in this story, there's, there's first, or I should say in Genesis, this creation period. And, and God goes through uh, six days of creation. Day one, he creates something, evaluates it. Day two, he creates something, evaluates it. Day three, and so on and so on. And he finally, and every time he creates something, he says, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. 
when he gets to day six, he creates the human species. He creates man. He creates Adam, Adam. Uh, in the Hebrew, it's the word ish. And he creates the male gender. And you know what he says on this day? It's not good for this man to be alone. He's not saying Adam's not good. He said it's not good for man to be alone. Now, alone, by the way, is all one. He was whole, okay, but he could do more, accomplish more with the female gender there with him. And so God basically says um, his intention, in, es in essence, for creation wasn't or couldn't be accomplished with just the male gender. He wanted to accomplish, or it couldn't accomplish it, without bringing a female into the equation. In other words, humanity needs women. I thought, Pastor, you were going to bang up the women today, and now you're, you're, you're pumping them up. Don't worry. It's coming, gentlemen. Don't worry, okay? But a lot of times people interpret the scripture as a mandate for marriage. It's not. Jesus wasn't married. Jesus wasn't married, and he did a lot. He accomplished the mightiest mission of all. Paul, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, perpetuated the, the growth of the, uh, the New Testament church. Uh, he was single. In fact, he encouraged that. He said, if you could, basically, Paul said, if you can maintain yourself, your lusts, your appetites, your desires, if you, can, if you can redirect those, your life will be a lot more simple if you don't get married. So this wasn't God saying uh, clearly it's a marriage mandate. No, he's saying it's a mankind mandate. In order for us to accomplish what uh, he wanted us to accomplish, we would have to learn to work together. Come on, somebody. This is good whether you like it or not. So after creation, he gives some instructions. You know the instructions. Everything you can enjoy. All this is yours. This is your playground. You, you can eat of this. You can do that. You can walk around naked and feel no All that's for you. But there's just one boundary. There's just one exception. There's just one thing, specifically one tree you cannot touch. And, 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 and I think God did this so that we as human beings could... Um, be fully functioning human beings. In other words, for us to be a fully functioning human being, we're going to have to be able to walk free. Remember I've said this before at Connect, the most powerful people on planet Earth are free people. Free people. And in order for us to be free, it's not manifest or expressed in our ability to say yes to do whatever we want, but it's actually expressed by the power to say no to some things we want to touch, some things we like. And so if you're experiencing God's best, uh, if you're going to experience it, sometimes you're going to have to look at the things you like and you're going to have to say no. Freedom is not revealed in your ability to say yes. Freedom is revealed, revealed in your ability to say no. Freedom is revealed, you should write that down, in your ability to say no. So if somebody calls you and they're going to try to sell you something over the phone and you have to make the decision right now and you can't say no, that's not freedom. If, so, if, 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 if you go to an ice cream joint with your kids, but you're on a fast and you've committed to the Lord, this is your fast, and everybody's getting ice cream, and you go, oh, I guess I'm going to go ahead and have an ice cream. Now, I know there's legalism, but just don't, don't, don't get distracted with, with that. But if you can't say no, that's not freedom, okay? God, we express our freedom sometimes by our ability to exercise restraint. Back to the story. Come on, somebody. So, Eve... She's the, in Hebrew, the Isha, the Ish and the Isha. What is that? They're Hebrew words that are, are behind a lot of the English words we use, and sometimes they have a deeper meaning. For example, Hebrew words use pictures a lot of times to describe uh, meaning. And a good picture, a modern picture of this relationship between Adam and Eve would be a hand and glove relationship. Ish, male gender, Adam. Isha, male gender, originally Adam, later Adam named her Eve, is a hand and then a glove over it. In other words, they were not opposites that oppose. They were opposite, uh, perfectly opposite with each other. They were opposites that learned to work together. They were opposites that didn't compete but celebrated uh, those differences. And so Eve is walking around the garden, and she, 
uh, encounters Satan in the form of a snake. Why is he there as, as a snake? Why did she engage him? Well, I think he was there as a snake because there were a lot of animals there. And I think she engaged him because he looked like he belonged there. And so I think if he just came out like Satan with the pitchfork, she would have been like, here's the Heisman, buddy. You know, get out of here. I'm not listening to you. So he shows up in a form that she could uh, accept. He looks like everybody else. And that's how Satan will deceive a lot of people that are listening to me within the sound of my voice now or in the future. Satan will not come to you uh, as an angel of darkness. He comes as an angel of light. He doesn't come on your doorstep and say, here I am, bow down to me and serve me and worship me. No, he gets you to worship other idols and ultimately he gets you to worship him. Come on, somebody, that's good preaching. So he, he looked like everybody else and he influences her to touch what God said not to touch. And often I look at this story and when I preached it in the past, especially in verse 6, and I'll get there, I was trying to figure out what went wrong here. And when I would preach what went wrong here, it was more like, where was Adam? Like, what was he doing, okay? What, what, you know, like, just like when God later came in and he said, where, 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 Adam, where are you? I, I was thinking that that applied to the whole story. But then there's this, there's this important detail that we read just a few minutes ago, and I actually learned this from a great pastor named Darius Daniels, so I want to give street cred to him. But in verse 6, here's what, here's what it says. When the woman saw the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, is desirable for wisdom, she took and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, check it out, who was with her. Who was with her. Now, the issue clearly we can see now wasn't that, that Adam was absent in the garden, which was my assumption. Where is he at? In other words, it wasn't a location problem. Just like when God came into the garden, he said, Adam, where are you? It's not because God didn't know where he was. God was saying, where are you at? Like, wh what's going on with you? Like, you're, what, you're not, you're not, you haven't assumed your role. Where, where are you? God clearly knew where he was. But in this situation, it wasn't an absence problem either. The, the problem here wasn't an absence problem. It was a silence problem. See, Adam's issue wasn't that he wasn't there. His issue was that he didn't speak up when he was right there. Okay, so listen, ladies, I want you to think about this in your life with the men that are in your life, and hopefully you have some that are in your life. Are the men in your life right now silent? Do you have any men speaking into your life? Do you have any men that have the ability to, I used, my dad used to say, stick your finger, stick his finger in your eye. In other words, kind of deal with some sensitive subjects and sensitive areas. And if, they're, and if your answer is the men in your life are silent, if the answer is yes, then it begs another question. Do the men in your life feel understood? Do they feel listened to? Uh, do you let them talk? Do you let them finish what they're saying? Do you, when they're starting to say something, do you tell them what they should be saying instead of listening to what, in fact, they are saying? Hmm. See, I'm not getting a lot of amens. I'm probably in Framingham and Ashland right now. But if a man doesn't feel heard, he doesn't feel listened to, eventually that man, he goes silent. And I would suggest that he moves from that to almost like he becomes like a, a walking, spiritually dead man. A lot of the things that you're upset about, a lot of the things that you're preoccupied with, even things that you're praying about, you might be part of the healing process for that. I actually believe some men that are out there are nearly deaf, maybe even mute, because they have not been listened to by the women in their life. Now, one problem, especially in the church, this is very true, is that many men who are near are not heard. You know, children, we have the phrase, children are to be seen and not heard. I believe men are supposed to be seen and heard. The voice of the man is very, very important uh, in the church, in the community, in culture, in marriage, with children, uh, in relationships. We need the man's voice to be heard. Now, back to the story. So, he wasn't absent, he was silent, but before you go blaming the man for what happened, I want you to um, speculate with me just a little bit. I don't know the best way to say it. Hypothesize with me. Maybe there's another scene that could have transpired here. It's like in a movie when you have, usually there's a great movie that comes out and there's, a, there's an ending that would be the better sale, but they don't, but they don't 
they don't put out the alternative ending until later, okay? Let's just say there was an alternative scene to what happened there in the garden. Here's the question that precedes that scene. Why was Adam silent? Pause for effect. Why was he silent? See, sometimes there's a, there's a reason perhaps why this took place. I believe, if, if honest, if you're honest, I know this to be true, that there are some conversations, some observations, there are some plausible and possible situations that might suggest a different possibility here with this situation. Here it is. Are you ready? Here it is. What if Adam tried to talk to her, but she wasn't listening? Are there any amens out there? I don't know. Maybe there's a couple amens far away in another land. I don't know, but... If I put this in a 2021 scenario, perhaps you and I, if we had a chance to talk to Adam today, or we could pop up to heaven and just have a conversation. Yo, Adam, why didn't you say something right there? Do you understand the decimating effects of your silence? Bro, what happened? He might say to you, me, bro, do you know how hard it is to talk to Eve? <laughs> I mean, maybe, I mean, think about your own marriage, bro. I mean, how, how many positive conversations you had when you had to tell her something that she didn't want to hear or tell her to do something that she didn't want to do? How did it go for you? Mm, not hearing, again, I'm, I'm not feeling any amens through this camera, so I'm just going to have to amen myself, encourage myself in the Lord. But maybe he did say something. Maybe there was just this resistance, this reluctance, this, this, uh, this, um, uh, this buffer, you know, this force field there. And, and, and so maybe, maybe he confronted her. Maybe he even confronted her about the snake, too. Yo, I don't want, you know, Eve, I don't want you talking to him. Like, no, he's bad news. What are we talking about? He's been here all this time. He's just like any one of the other animals here. Can't you see? He's been here for a while. You know, he's filling me in on stuff. He's helping me see clearly. Oh, he's helping you see clearly. I don't think so. I think he's going directly against what God told him. No, 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 that's not what he meant. That's not what he said. You're totally reading into the situation. Just lay off. You don't know what you're talking about. He's just a friend. Oh, he's just a friend. I got a song that's going through my head. He's just a friend. Whatever. But I won't do that. But anyway, maybe he was talking to her. Maybe he did confront her. All right? So I thought about that. And then, then I thought, well, all right, what about this, Adam? What about this? It's one thing if you talk to her. But then you turned around and you went along with it and you ate the fruit. Listen. Maybe there's another ending. Maybe there's an alternative ending to this. I think it's possible, plausible. Uh, you know, look at your own life experience, gentlemen, ladies. Maybe he thought, and I'm speaking, listen, and I'm standing in proxy for men trying to get through to some women right now. Listen, rather than deal with the ramifications of trying to confront these different problems, even knowing that the outcomes could be negative, uh, Maybe it's going to hurt somebody later. Maybe it's going to hurt my children. He probably didn't know his children's children. He probably didn't know this thing would go on for generations. But rather than dealing with this confrontation and the ramifications from confronting Eve, he thought, I'm just going to eat it. I'm just going to eat it. It's just, it's just too much. It's too much. Work. It's not worth it. I'm just going to eat it. And you know what he does? He goes silent. And listen, I think there are a bunch of men that are listening to me, and they're holding back. They, they're feeling something going on inside of them because I am speaking to a core issue inside every man, maybe every young man, maybe even a boy who can't express themselves, who can't come out, who can't communicate, and they want to so badly, and they're stifled. And we must have men who are vocal again. We must have it. It's so critical to our society today because, because a man was silent, so many were hurt, and so many were harmed thereafter. And if a man will not be silent, so many will be healed, and so many will be helped thereafter. So I want to I wanna give you like four quick vocalizations for men. I'm going to go through these really rapidly. But here's the first one. Ladies, you need to know this. You probably know this, but we don't practice this. I need you to know we're not the same. We're different, Okay. And, and there's uniqueness between men and women. Now, sometimes 
you understand we're supposed to be different, but sometimes it feels like women are trying to replicate, clone themselves in their man. Look what Genesis 2.18 says. It says, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I'll make a suitable helper for him. All right? And a helper, by the way, means Specifically, it means uh, perfectly opposite, like I was saying earlier, that hand-in-glove thing. And so we're not supposed to be competing. We're supposed to be uh, complementing. I don't even like completing because that says 50-50. God wants you to be 100 and her to be 100% free. But God wants you to be uh, uh, complementing each other in your union and in your relationship. And so, ladies, you need to ask yourself sometimes, do you want... Um, do you want a man or do you want a male version of me for your life? Do you want that? Do you want somebody saying the same things that you would say in a situation? Or do you want a, a complimentary comment versus the same comments? See, some of you might be saying amen, ladies out there. And it's, it's, it's one thing to be conceptually agreeable or in, to embrace the differences between men and women. It's quite another to practically or practice those differences with each other. Amen? So how, sometimes how this plays out is, and this, this is what I see as a little, there's a lot of inequities towards women. Okay, I don't have time for that. That's not what this is this morning. But inequity towards man that I see, and I'm, I'm standing in proxy for men today, is often a woman can be expressing her authentic self, okay? And that's, to, that's appropriate. It's even celebrated. But if a man is trying to express his authentic self, it needs adjustments. In other words, <laughs> the way the original manufacturer design of a man is insufficient and it needs to be fixed by others, in particular, sometimes by women. See, there are these differences and they should show up. And if they do show up, everybody grows up. Now, here's another thing is um, on, we're not the same. So here's how it can manifest. All right. Sometimes we just don't want to talk. Sometimes, now there's been study after study after study, and I've said this before, but I don't know if you, I don't know if we forget this, but a woman, a woman speaks about twenty plus thousand words a day. Okay, that's fine, that's great. I'm not knocking that. It's all good. Don't get upset. But a man speaks about seven thousand words a day. I'm not a math whiz, but that's thirteen thousand words difference. Okay, and so. Uh, so listen, men, you're going to have to use your words strategically, and you should use your words with the people that matter most. But ladies, even if he does that, it's not that he doesn't want to talk. He's just flat run out of words. I'm going to go on to the next point, okay? Another thing that we have a tendency, a difference between us is women are multitask and men are hyper, hyper focused, okay? We cannot watch the football game and talk to you at the same time, okay? Now, sometimes we lie because you'll be saying, you'll be talking to us and, did you hear me? And then we'll be like, yeah, I heard you. We didn't hear you, okay? I just want you to know that because we are hyper focused men, okay? But you can do multiple things. You can be cooking. You can be talking on the phone. You can be disciplining a kid. You can, you can know what somebody's doing upstairs at the same time. We can't do that. So stop trying to make us be multitask, okay? So we, we're going to have to, you're going to have to get our undivided attention and vice versa. This kind of goes both ways. We also, this is another one, and this is just me proxy for men. We know that we're not supposed to just come in fixing your problems, right? You, you. Just listen to us. I'm not asking you to solve anything right now, honey. I'm just asking you to listen. Would you just sit there and just listen? Okay. When we listen, and then we listen, and then we listen, listen, at some point, for the love of Moses, we have to be allowed to solve or to fix the problem. So a lot of times we're asked to do something, but we're not rewarded at the end of that for being able to offer a solution. A lot of times I'm sitting there like, my legs just going like, I know exactly what to do. I know exactly what to do. Just let me do it. Let me say it. Please let us solve the problem. My wife does a great job with this, so I want to give a shout out. I don't want to ruin my Father's Day. My wife has grown in this tremendously and always invites me to lead by offering solutions. 
And that's a great way to get headship in your home. We, we, we talked about headship versus leadership. To get headship in your home, ladies, invite your man at some point in the conversation. What do you think I should do? How do you think I should handle this situation? What do you think is the best solution? Man, he will light up, and it brings the voice of the man back into the equation. Here's another one. Um, this is small, but it comes up, and I'm just talking about this for guys. We want you to listen to us when we decide to talk. I'm going to get so many emails for this. We want you to listen to us when we decide to talk. So here's the thing. You just need to know how men are wired, right? We only have X number of words. Then we go to talk, and then you're all multitasking. And then and the kids are coming up, you know, and everything's just everything's going crazy. Listen, we want you to listen. In fact, when you don't stop, kind of drop, and just listen, we feel dishonored. We feel dishonored. So I'm just telling you how men work. Now, I am not excusing dysfunction. I am not... Uh, excuse, excusing abuses or excesses or any or anything like that. I'm just saying th th those things don't diminish these realities. Number two, if you're still with me and haven't signed off online or walked out of the church today, I need you to know. <laughs> I need you to know we have physical needs. Okay, we have physical needs. All right. Okay. Next point, number three. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Sort of. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, all right, 1 Corinthians 7. It basically says that the husband's body doesn't belong to him, and the wife's body doesn't belong to her. The guy's like, yeah, my body belongs to you, baby. And she's like, reluctant. Now, we can't take that privilege away from her. It must be given, but ladies, it must be given, okay? Unless by mutual consent for a season you separate, this is really important. And a lot of times you want your man to talk. I'm just going to give you a secret. We sanctify our men with sex, gentlemen. We sanctify our women with affection and attention. That's how we keep people's, our marriages sanctified. So you want him to talk, he will be a chatterbox when you bring and meet those physical needs. Okay, next point. I'm really moving on because that's like a four-week series, and I don't need any more emails. Number three, this is a big one. I need... I'm talking for the men. Honey, I'm not talking for myself. You're so awesome. All right. I need you to believe in me, not nag me. I need you to believe in me, not nag me. Now, I think wives and mothers and grandmothers underestimate the significance and power of their words. I was just walking through the neighborhood the other day, and I was working through some long-term financial things for my wife and I. And I don't remember everything she said, but I remember her saying, I'm so thankful how smart you are with how you handle our finances. Man, I was walking like this before, and then I started walking like this. Man, I started walking my chest out. I'm like, yo, can you all see me here in the neighborhood? You know, I'm smart, right? Because I don't care what everybody else thinks, right? A lion doesn't lose sleep over the sheep, over the opinion of the sheep. All right, but when a lioness says something to the lion, roar, he starts to roar. He puffs up. He starts getting kind of rugged and tough again. His voice comes back, everybody. So the greatest gift you can give men, this could be from a mother, a grandmother, a spiritual mother, a sister. Listen, the greatest gift you can give men is you, you tell them you believe in them. See, I think men bring vision to the equation, but I think women bring belief to the men. I believe in you. The best compliment I ever had is my wife said, I believe in you. The next best compliment I ever had was uh, your biggest muscle is your heart. Okay? But all those things have nothing to do with some of the things that I sometimes tried to do for her. Interesting, right? So, anyway, often men don't hear those things. They hear the nag voice. Now, before you dismiss that you might be a nag, let's define nagging. I might need more time. All right, constantly, nagging is constantly harassing someone to do something. It comes in form of criticisms, comments, get this right now, and lots and lots of questions. Lots, lots of questions. Proverbs 25, 24 says, better to live on the corner of the roof than share a house with a quarrelsome, or one translation says, a nagging wife. So if... To him, if that's happening, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. It might feel like the home is hell on earth. It might feel like it's not a palace but a prison. And a lot of it has to do with not what you say 
but how you say it as his suitable helper, as his, as his health mate. And a lot of times, we, why, woman's like, why did you do that? You, you should have done it like this. You, you can't do it like that. It's not going to work if you do that. That's stupid. That's crazy. You know, I'm tired of telling you this. How many times am I going to have to tell you this? I've been through this so many times. I mean, you're acting like a child. Whoa. Hello. So how do you think he feels? You know what he translates out of that? Over time, what's happening? It makes him feel incompetent. It makes him feel stupid. Now, sometimes you're like, you're like, sometimes you're like, it's, it's right, though, but it's true. Okay, 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 okay. But you just complicated things by the way that you communicated those things. And so sometimes women will say to me, Peter, you don't understand sometimes. It's the only way I can get through to him. I have to say it like that. Oh, okay. Here's what I'd say to you. You might win the day but you're losing the war. You might get something in his head for a second, but you've lost his heart for your whole marriage. He might be staying with you physically, but he's left the building emotionally if you nag and you don't build up and you don't encourage. Believe in him. Build him up. Come alongside him. Help him the right way. You might say, that's why I'm here, baby. I'm here to help you. I understand that's not one of your strengths. That's okay. This is why God gave me to you. I'm here to come alongside you. I'm here to help you. We're going to beat this thing together. Come on, somebody. That's the way it works. T.D. Jake said, his wife spoke to him one time and said, I can see the worst in you and still believe in you. Wow. Talk about a marriage secret. Number four, last point. I think this has been good for all the men and all the women have left the church. They're starting another church. All right, number four, I need to be appreciated, not just affirmed. Not just affirmed. Now, admiration is felt. Appreciation is expressed. Is expressed. And here's what I learned a long time ago. I learned this from Andy Stanley, street cred. Andy Stanley used to say, men move towards environments where they feel competent to lead and are appreciated. Men move towards environments where they feel competent to lead and are appreciated for what they did. That place, that environment, what happens is it will ultimately capture their heart and attention. And by the way, it just happens. It's not intentional. And sometimes those environments that capture their attention and their hearts are not good for them. They didn't plan to sin, but it's just it's just a law of man. They move towards those places where they have dominion, where they have competence, where they have uh, affirmation. They don't decide. It just happens. And guess what? You're going to see something else. Men aren't the only ones who do that. Luke 17, 18 says Jesus, after healing 10 lepers, it says one of them came back, a foreigner. And Jesus said he has Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? In other words, he said, no one is appreciating me for what I just did? Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, if the problem list is longer than the praise list, then we got a big problem. We got a big problem. And and, and if we're focusing, and if he thinks all you think about is what he does wrong, if he thinks you think that, if that's all he can hear or perceive, that it's all about what he does wrong and it's nothing about what he does right, then he's going to feel underappreciated. It's deeper than admiration. It's honor with action steps to it. And I understand that, ladies, that men can be a handful. I get it. I get it. Okay? But you can be too. You can be too. I'm safe because I'm behind this camera and there's, there's nobody here running me down right now. <laughs> but, but listen, men hang out where they are appreciated. And guess what? God does too. He inhabits the praises of his people. See, men want to be praised. God does too. I don't think it's wrong. I don't think it's wrong that he's looking for a cheerleader in his life. And so I would just say, ladies, when's the last time you thanked your man? This, sound, this is edgy. For, for putting up with you sometimes, and some of your antics, and some of your different personality moments, some of your emotionalism. When's the last time you said, thank you, baby? I know sometimes I can be difficult, and I'm so sorry. Thank you. When's the last time you said, thank you for going to work every single day, and you're going into that toxic environment? And I know it's been really difficult for you, but you do it because you care about me and the kids, and you do it every single day, and you don't complain, or at least you don't complain a lot. Thank you. I just want to say thank you. See, I think a lot of times we might... We might admire someone, 
but sometimes we're not appreciating someone that's around us. I think this Father's Day, we ought to recognize all the dads. I think this Father's Day, we ought to walk out here and just say, thank you, thank you, thank you. We need to affirm the men in our life so they can get the voice back as well. Now listen, I want to close with this, this, this little illustration. I was almost brought a little, a little tool for this, but I, I was thinking about one time we were playing a game as a family. There's a young man, I won't mention his name. I'm so tempted to say his name because that's what I always do, but I'm not going to do that. But we were playing like catchphrase. You know catchphrase where you have to like describe something, but you can't use those words. And then if you use those words, you get the buzz. You know, you get the buzz. And I could tell our new friend was like, his turn was coming around. He was starting to get anxious, you know, starting to get kind of uptight inside. And and then his turn came and then the clock's ticking and he's trying to look, he's looking at all these words and just like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm going to do this. And he he says a couple things and he makes a mistake. Oh man, now he's going, now he's really struggling. He's becoming even more uh, uh, frustrated, even more, it's becoming more difficult. And he tries again, keeps happening. Every time he's getting ready to express himself, every time he's getting ready to vocalize something, he gets buzzed. And this is a parallel to what I think men feel like sometimes. Deep down inside this young man, he wanted to just chuck the game. He wanted to just like take that buzzer and throw it. He wanted to be able to say what was on his mind. He wanted to be able to finish the sentence before he gets cut off. But he kept getting buzzed, 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 buzzed. And, and this is what happens sometimes to men in our society today. That voice is silenced by the buzz. And one or two things happen when, when men feel buzzed by life. They either just go totally silent, they quit the game, they never play the game again. Or they become angry. And they're going to say what they're going to say, and you're going to listen, and they become these domineering people, and they try to do it with control, and they try to do it with that dominance. And then what happens is we demonize our differences instead of understand each other. See, I'm calling men out there today to be vocal again, to come out and lead again, to be vocal with God. Let let men, you know, lift up holy hands and make sure that we're praising God. I I want you to be vocal with your wife. Don't, Don't let her go this way or that way when you see something. Be vocal again. Be vocal with your children at the table. Be vocal in your church and begin to lead again. Take take spiritual leadership. You don't have to have it all worked out here. It's okay to not be okay all the time. It's okay to not have it all figured out. Begin to lead in your church. And that's when the communities begin to get changed. And that's when the country begins to change again when men see their voice restored. We need, we need men to stop being silent. You know what? Jesus is a big part of that equation. In Mark chapter 7, there's a story of a boy who was deaf and he was also mute. He was deaf and he could hardly talk, the Bible says. And they begged Jesus to lay hands on him. Very interesting. He did such a manly thing. Jesus spit in the ground. Excuse me. It says he spit and touched him. He spit and touched him. So, I mean, that's such a manly thing. You know, just spit on the guy put his finger in the air, and then spits on the guy. And, on the, and he spits on the man's tongue. That's what it says. You can read it in your Bible. And then he looked up to heaven and he said, be opened. And that's what I want to say. I want to look to heaven and I want to look to all the men that are listening within the sound of my voice. Voice, open up again. Start to lead again spiritually. I'm not asking you to to take over and take control. I'm asking you to let God take over and take control of your life again. Do not remain silent in those situations that God has called you to. Be opened in Jesus' name. And just like Jesus can open a mouth and he can open ears, Jesus is the only one that can touch a heart. And so with every head bowed, with every eye closed, I want to just pray with you wherever you are. Ashland, Framingham, online, just close your eyes. I'm asking leaders to come to the front in both locations right now. Come down front. Be ready to minister to people because we're going to pray for you online. We're going to pray for you in person. But if you're a person that's there today and your voice has been stifled, I just want you to put your hand on your heart. Maybe you don't want to call a lot of attention to yourself. That's okay just because of your situation. Father, in Jesus' name, be opened. Every man, every man of God, use this message, use this series to inspire men to lead again. Voice be opened in Jesus' name. And if you're here today and you're far from God and you've never connected with him, Jesus wants to touch your heart, but you got to open up the door and let him in. 
All you got to do is say, all you got to do is just invite Jesus. Say, I, I, I want to be saved. I want, I want to give my life to you. I want to dedicate my life to you from this point forward. So pray this prayer with me. Online, in person, just say this. Say, Jesus, today is the day of salvation for me. Today, I commit my life to you. Touch my heart in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that you sent your son to die for me, to pay for my sins. I receive by grace through faith that gift in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Come on, can you give the Lord a hand clap at both locations? Can you clap wherever you are, maybe online? This is a big day where, where hearts are being opened, voices are being opened as well. God saved people and God set men's voices free. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to text CC saved to 97,000. CC saved to 97,000. We're going to send you a book and we're going to send you on your spiritual journey in the best way possible. If you're in person, come and receive prayer. Tell somebody what just happened to you. We want to give you your next steps on your spiritual journey. If you're online, pray with somebody. Just say, raise your hand and say, that was me. I just said yes to Jesus and I want to pray with somebody today. Listen. I can't wait to see you again next Sunday. I can't wait to see you in small groups tomorrow and also on Tuesday. Don't miss an opportunity to continue to go and grow. I love you. PDL.